I want you to know, read this with me. Faith sees the invincible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Okay? Colossians 1, 27 was the scripture. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. And this is the mystery, which is Christ in you, or in us, the hope of glory. That's the mystery that he's talking about. And it's been revealed, okay? We've got to get that into our spirits as the body of Christ. The question today is, are we living in condemnation? Okay? How many of you felt that you've been condemned because you didn't read those scriptures three times a day to your situation? Anybody else feel condemnation? Okay. Let me tell you, we're going to find out where that comes from because it's not from God. Okay. So I don't want you to really check that out because, you know, the devil's sneaky. Okay. Do you believe... That God is the giver of healing, prosperity, deliverance, peace, salvation, the baptism and the Holy Spirit, a spouse, children, and every other good thing. Do you guys believe that? Of course you do. Yeah. But maybe we don't feel worthy to receive those things. Okay. Many Christians have refused and are refusing the gifts that Jesus made available to us through his shed blood because they think that they are un worthy to receive them okay it's crossed i know thousands i spent a lot of time talking to folks it could be because of their past sins because of their past mistakes and those and or the past sins or mistakes of others you know they don't feel they are good enough everybody say good enough to receive from a holy god okay it could be like us okay and if that is then houston we have a problem Okay, so we're going to address that problem. If we've been having trouble receiving healing, financial breakthrough, or anything else we need from the Lord, and we struggle with those feelings of shame, um, unworthiness, we may be living in condemnation, and we need to get that resolved. Okay, so the question is, oh, sorry, John, I almost smashed your thing. What is condemnation? Okay. Simple definitions of the, of the dictionary, are, they include feelings of guilt, shame, regret, fear, and unworthiness, usually stemming from a past mistake or experience. Okay, they could have happened 10 years ago. They could have happened this morning. They could have happened 10 minutes ago when we were in worship and you were thinking about what I'm going to eat after the service. You might have thought, oh my gosh, i got to get back focused on the word. Oh yeah, that was so good. Praise Jesus. Praise him, praise him, praise him. When are we going to praise him? Hallelujah, praise him. Oh, pastor, don't preach all day long. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise God, oh, hallelujah, praise him. Praise Jesus. Surely he's just going to not go on and on. Surely he won't do, oh, praise Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. I love being in your presence for. Oh, that's way too long to be in his presence. Oh, my gosh. And then we feel that thing come nagging at us. What is that thing that's nagging at me? I'm here to tell you in Romans 8.1. He said, there is therefore now, everybody say now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Psalm 34, 22 says, The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. He, 1 John 1, 9, love this. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Not just a little bit. All. What does all mean? all. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And he said, and I will not remember your sins. Psalms 103, 10. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Another important point to consider is that there is a difference between conviction and condemnation, okay? The Holy Spirit, he will convict us. He will deal with us, but he'll never condemn us. 
Big difference. Big difference between conviction and condemnation. Okay? He, the Holy Spirit, everybody say Holy Spirit. Holy he doesn't aim to make us feel guilty. That's not his job. Everybody's going, he doesn't? Oh, no. We just read in Romans 8, 1. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation, which means guilt, regret, or anything if you're in Christ Jesus. Well, I know, but I missed the mark. He said, there's no condemnation. Now you know you missed it. <laughs> what do we do? We repent. We repent and get on down the road and work on that. Correction usually comes by a quickening from the Holy Spirit as we read and as we study the Word of God. Or it comes through maybe a, a fellow minister, somebody in a fellowship time, or somebody you know, along those lines, maybe your spouse. No, surely not, surely not, surely not, surely not. I have thought at times that my spouse was condemning me, and I found out that no, the Holy Spirit was using her to convict me. And she is the type of woman that she, hey babe, you know, this is something you might consider, you know, that maybe you didn't quite handle this right, and just, just to check it out. Well, instead of, back in the early days, when I say, well, who are you to tell me? I'm the blessed God man of the house. You know, I didn't tell you, I told you. And I end up on my face going, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. Then I got to go back and repent to my wife for responding to her like that as well. You know? And she's supposed to be the weaker vessel that says, my wife is not a weaker vessel. Hallelujah. You know? The woman listens to the Holy Ghost and she knows. So, gentlemen, if your wife just subtly comes up to you, you know, you know, you know how she does you know how subtle Beth is, right, Daryl? Hey! <laughs> Not very subtle at all sometimes. But it, it's okay. Listen. And don't respond harshly. Say, why, well, thank you, dear. I think I'll go into the Holy of Holies and ask the Father about that. Okay? Condemnation is brought on by the devil. And he wants to make us feel bad things, unworthy, afraid, and guilty. And he'll invade our thoughts or use other people to accomplish that task. There are other people that they may mean well, but bless God, they're not doing well. We might have been guilty doing it at one time or the other. Well, you know, if, if they would just roll those cords properly, we would never have a cord issue on the stage. Because I'm talking about the spirit of excellence, and the spirit of excellence calls for a cord need to be properly rolled. Is that right, Betty? Amen, sister. Amen. Ain't that right, brother? Amen. But no, some people, they just slap their cords around and, oh, she just, they might even set it to somebody, you know, or you could be like Betty does. She just gently rolls the cords, sets them aside as an example, might be thinking those things, but never once did she say them. <laughs> no words of condemnation ever came out of her mouth. You know, we might be thinking that Michael Ostrander should not be a White Sox fan. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with the White Sox. That's right. No, okay. What's their record? Never mind. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, sorry. It might be, it might be, I know. You're okay, brother. It's all right. I don't know how to win. I, oh, well, I know. I know that. I know that. You can tell the people are from Chicago that are here. You know, so it's okay. And, um, and, um, but, you know, it's, it's not our job to point out other people's faults or weaknesses. Okay? It's not what we're called to do. So we need to ask ourselves, am I living in condemnation at all in any way, shape, or form? Okay? Here's warning sign number one. There are 17 warning signs. Just kidding. Just kidding. I saw Josh President go, dear Jesus, there better not be 17 words. Huh? <laughs> Pastor, I'm out. I'm out. Warning sign, everybody say number one. There's only four, okay? We think about the past a lot. Okay, Philippians 1. Oh, I did that already. Oh, that's good. One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. 
I like the way the New American Standard said it. That's why I used that version. Think about it. Do, we, do, we, do thoughts of our past seem to creep out of nowhere at some point in time? I know they have for me. Mistakes and sins that even 10, 20, and 30 years that should have been under the blood and stayed under the blood, do they creep up and try to ensnare us and attack us? Sure they do. Or maybe we keep reliving a negative life experience that left us hurt over and over and over again. It could have been a relationship at some point in time. It could have been a previous marriage. It could have been previous something with your, your parent. You know, you might have been abused as a child. You might, all of those things, they want to tend to come back and haunt us. They want to tend to come back and make us relive the shame, the guilt, the regret over and over and over again. Have you ever said, I wish I would have? Man, if only I wouldn't have. If, man, if I just would Oh, I said that, you know, more than once. More than once. The number one warning sign that we may be living in condemnation and that something's not just right is it's if we think about our past, our past sins and negative circumstances. And remember, those things can leave us feeling negative. That's why God tells us to leave what's in the past in the past. Yesterday's done. It's over with. This morning's over with. The fact that Joey had to get up and do Jossie's hair this morning. You did a great job, Joey. Excellent. Outstanding, by the way. Outstanding, by the way. Because she had to be here at practice at 8.30. So Joey willingly got up at 6 and got ready and everything ready to go. And Not quite right. Close, okay, just close, just close by it. Okay, okay, okay. It leaves in the past. So, okay, so how do we, how do, we do that? That's where we got to know that Jesus already took the condemnation upon the cross. He willingly took it. He said, nail it all up there. Man, that's why we have that cross in the back and we got these chains and sometimes we'll have services where you can grab a chain and you can take that past thing that's been and put it up there and leave it as an act of your will and letting it go. Because we talked about this time and time in the past where we'll come and we'll try to leave it here. God, I'm, I'm turning this over to you right now. You can have it. I'm leaving it here. And I thank you that you're going to take care of it. And then because it's been 33 seconds and Okay, since you're not going to do it, I will. And that's what we sang that song. It says, man, didn't get in a hurry. Lazarus was dead how long? Four days? Surely he stinketh? Oh, you knew he stinketh. Jesus wasn't concerned. He said, it's all right. It's all right. If you ask Jeff how his wife is, what's he going to tell you? All is well. All is well. Why? He knows what she's battling. But there's some folks that wouldn't, oh my gosh, is she, are you serious? Oh, how are you? Adjust? Oh my gosh. Do you know that sometimes people never get over that? They can, she, oh my goodness, you know, oh, um, and they mean well, they just don't know. So his answer is, all is well. Because he knows the word of God, Okay. It isn't it just enough to mentally acknowledge the truth, okay? Don't replace the bad choices, okay? I want you to read 2 Corinthians 10.5. He said, The casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. When we start thinking on the other things that aren't the word of God, what's he say? Oh, cast those things down. He'll bring every thought to the captive of the obedience of Christ. And no, 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 no. That's why he said to meditate in the word day and night. He said, then we will have good success. But sometimes we don't because we all get busy and well-doing. Okay? So we got to constantly say, man, I don't live in the past. I ain't staying in the past. I'm going on and on and on. But your enemy is relentless, okay? I'm just here to tell you. If he can get you off focus just a bit, he's a happy guy. He'll go down and mess with some more folks if you'll just stay off focus, okay, no matter what it is. Warning sign number two, okay? This is, um, we can't seem to forgive ourselves. That's a warning sign that we might be living in condemnation. 
The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, this is a New Living Translation. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Okay? The old has passed away. When we become born again, we're brand new. Everything is done. All that past, all the past mistakes, all the past sin, everything, it, it's done. We, we're, we're brand new. It's a brand new day. And early in the morning, when we get up, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new start. We get to go all over. We get the opportunity to do it again. And even better, to affect more people for Jesus than we did the day before. Man, you know that word enthusiasm? It starts with the two Greek words, in theos. That means in God. That's where that came from. In God, enthusiasm for the day, for the word, for his, you know, oh, I just long for that resurrection power to be manifested. You know, we had last week, somebody had a chicken raised from the dead and it got the same response last week too. Oh, oh really? Somebody said, well, dang, you could have fried it. I said, but she didn't want to fry it. It was her chicken that laid eggs and it lived. It was dead. There's no doubt it was dead. It lives. She prayed for it. It came to life. And it's doing what it's supposed to. Lay eggs. But, you know, it's, it's like somebody says, well, I've got another outlook. Let's just eat it. Die, let's eat it. Okay. You could have done a couple of things. Okay. Okay, condemnation. Feelings of rejection. Feelings of failure. Insecurity and depression. You ever battled those? Insecurity and depression, that's all signs of condemnation, not conviction. There's people that struggle with that. Even probably in this house with depression. They, they just struggle with that, with the insecurity, with fear that tries to come upon us. My Bible says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a well-disciplined mind. That's what that word of God says. He said, think on these things. It's up to us to do it. He said, man, I've given you everything that pertains to life and God. He said, go be. Go be who I called you to be. Man, go conquer the world. Remind the devil, say, man, you're under my feet, so shut up and sit down and get back under there. Jack. Hope your name's not Jack when you're using that in vain. <laughs> First John 1 John 1.9, there's that scripture again. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. We got to learn to forgive ourselves. You know, sometimes it's easy for us to forgive other folks. Sometimes it's harder for us to forgive ourselves. So when you're looking in that mirror in the morning, you, ah! Jesus, I thought I'd lost 50 pounds in my sleep. He says, no, you, you were undisciplined. Okay, I'm working on that. When I know I'm undisciplined and then that feeling of, you know, oh, condemnation comes, that's not from the Lord. You know, he's, he's just reminded us, hey, don't worry about it. Let's get up. Let's do, let's do better today. You'll make a right choice. Just because the kids went to McDonald's, you had to take your grandkids there, doesn't mean you had to have one. Oh, yeah, Lord, but I didn't want them to feel bad. They're eating by themselves. <laughs> I was just trying to, he goes, so you know, he's like that going, mm-hmm. Let's get over it. Let's go better, better. We'll do better today. Yes, sir. And I don't feel condemned. But I feel encouraged. Okay, I'm going to make great choices today. Even when I'm back there helping, I'm probably going to have a piece of that all vegetarian pizza with no taste and horrible crust. <clears throat> oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> hey, you know what? If you don't forgive yourself, the devil's going to take it. He's going to beat us up with it. He loves to do that. It's a good time. So why? Maybe... Because we might be self-focused. Huh. And receiving forgiveness means we need to be God-focused. Just a thought. Just a thought. Okay, almost done. You're going to close in prayer, by the way, so. Warning sign number three. This could be a result of it. We have a judgmental and critical spirit. Not us, God, we're Christians. Matthew 7, 2. This is the Passion Translation. I like this. He said, For you'll be judged by the same standards that you've used to judge others. The measurement you use on them will be used on you. 
<laughs> Another sign we may live in condemnation if we have a judgmental and critical spirit. So what is that? It's, it's a, a critical and judgmental spirit it looks for flaws and failings in others and forms a verdict or opinion of them. Now, I know you guys have never done that. Not once have you ever said, well, you know, if a pastor would ever do this, you know, then this may happen. You know, if, um, if um, so-and-so would do this, then that might not happen, you know. And it all, it's, it's in the attitude of the heart, you know, this is what we got to deal with. But that's where we got to check ourselves. So as we're criticizing and passing judgment on others, and you're, we're saying stuff like that, and it says, well, at least I don't do that. That might be a fact that we're living under condemnation. Maybe. Maybe. Okay? However, often we are, we are only feeling judged by others because of condemning thoughts that replay in our heads. Okay? The Bible warns us about it. Okay? Here's the New King James version of that. It said, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you, by the way. God loves us so much, church, that he sent Jesus to die for us. And because we've accepted this free gift, are you born again? If you're in here born again, say, yeah, that's me. Raise your hand, say, that's me. I'm born again. Then we're no longer condemned. Okay? Look at somebody say, you no longer condemned. No, no longer condemned. No condemnation. Another sign of critical spirit fueled by condemnation may be highly critical of ourselves and comparing ourselves to others. We may need constant affirmation from people around us. We need to be affirmed. You know, need to be affirmed. Men like to be affirmed by their wives. They like, I would like, you know, for my wife to find something good about me and say it. That's not a natural gift to hers. Okay? She's very good at pointing out things that so why would you do that? I said, do, do what? Oh. And I just love it whenever she, and she has to train her. So it's not a natural flow for her. You know, I can find good in about everybody, no matter what. That's a nice freckle on your nose there. I like it. No matter what, I can find something good in folks, no matter what it is. No matter what it is. And some people don't. They, they just, you know, we always look, and always look. But I do see critical stuff. I see stains in carpet, you know, around here. I see, I see chairs that aren't lined up correctly. And, I'm, you know, it, it kind of drives, you know, drives me, drives Jenny crazy too. When things aren't, they don't put stuff away, things like that, you know. But craving compliments while being threatened if others aren't complimented. You know, if somebody else is getting complimented and I'm not getting one, maybe I'm living in condemnation. So how do we get free? We repent. Okay? Romans 14, 4 says, Who are you to judge someone else's servants? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand for the Lord is able to make them stand. Okay? I love this. Ephesians 4, 29 said, Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only when that is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. You might write that one down, take it home, okay? Just take that home with you. Just, I'm just saying, husbands and wives, just take that home, you know, because I know most of you don't ever say anything negative in front of your children. You wait and say, David, I need to see you in the bedroom. And then you, and you go in the bedroom, then you have your talk, low scale, you know, quietly. That way your kids aren't hearing what's going on, okay? Or... 1 Peter 4, it says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will what? Cover a what? A multitude. How many is that? That's a lot. A lot. What is a sin? It's something that simply misses the mark. Okay? He said, if it's not a faith, it's what? Sin. sin. It's an archery term. It says, man, that, that's the mark. If that's the mark and we fall short of it, he said, well, that's sin. You missed the mark. Okay? Whoa. Ooh. Whoa, fervent love. Walk in love. Choose to speak life over everybody. 
Choose to see the best in every warning sign for. Oh, let's do this one first. We feel unworthy. This is the last one. Romans 5, 8. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. Do you ever feel like you have to prove yourself to somebody or to God or anything else? We might be living in condemnation. Feeling unworthy, it's a nest warning sign that we may be living in condemnation and something's not right. 1 John 4, 16. If we have known and believed the love that God has for us, God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God is in him. You know, it's real easy to know in our heads that God loves us. Sometimes the hard thing is to know down here that he loves us unconditionally, just as we are. We need to get a revelation. I love what Brother Hagin said. He said, believing takes place in our heart, not in the head. Salvation is a heart thing. It's not a head thing. And you will know Somebody that's born again has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. And they understand and honor the Holy Spirit and everything that he is and who he is and that he's in them and honors the word of God. Big, big, big difference. We are called to please God and not man. Galatians 1.10. He says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings? Or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Ouch. You know what God sees when he looks at us? The blood of Jesus that we talked about. I'm letting you know that we already measure up. This is our final exhortation as it is every week. He said to watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Everything, church, this week be done in love. Because Jesus is coming again. Okay, stand on your feet.